Hello, welcome to Antonis TV. My name is Jet Duxbury, he's Oz. This is the YDP S34 and this is the YDP144. In this video, I'm going to try to help you decide between the two of them. Let's go. Sounded remarkably identical, right? That's because they've got the same gubbins in, the same sound engine. We've got 10 sounds in each. I'm going to flick through the sounds so you can hear them. I'm going to do it here on the YDP-144. That's the first piano you hear. I'm going to play that thing again. I communicate to you how it feels. These two will feel exactly the same as each other. I'm going to stick with where they're similar and then we're going to go off. If you don't want to hear me talking, you just want to hear playing or you want to skip to the relevant bit, the guys in the web team go to great efforts to put the chapters in. So please skip ahead. But as we're here, we're going to talk about how they're similar. They feel exactly the same. They both have a plastic key. Uh, we've got white, glossy ones matte black but they are graded and hammer action key beds so what does that mean graded means heavier at the bottom lighter at the top just like on a real piano there's a real hammer in there which adds its weight it's not too heavy and um, it's absolutely fine to play there's only two sensors in there so it means that um, really fast stuff you might struggle if you're a very advanced pianist but definitely okay for someone like me like a pedestrian guy going out there that's in terms of how they feel. In terms of the sound engine, they're both using the CFX sound engine. Yamaha CFX is a nine foot grand piano that they make really posh, and I think it sounds lovely. I'm gonna play some other stuff. Let's go for the key of G. So very rich, very full. I'm going to flick through the other sounds. Next one. A bit bright, a bit honkier. Nice, we've got electric panel there. Very usable, uh, good for any classic soul tunes. Let's go to the next one, what have we got? Nice, so we're rocking with a bit 80s. Just to prove you the same things. There we are in our 80s land. Um, Not many sounds, but these are good. Next, what have we got? Uh, let's have a look. Harpsichord. I, about four years ago, thoroughly offended the UK harpsichord community. And so now, I will only say good things about harpsichords. This is the next sound, what have we got? Some vibes.
these aren't chump change, these pianos, so I'm not surprised, but they do sound really full in here. We're listening to them on external speakers. They both have exactly the same speakers, two 8-watt speakers in there. They're not, you know, obviously, there's, we're going to talk about the furniture aspect of this in a minute. Because of their small slimline nature, especially when we talk about this one over here, they're not hoofing out sound, but that can be a good thing. I actually like that. And just to talk about how you listen to these things, there's two headphone ports on the bottom. So if you're doing a lesson or you've got a couple kids or, you know, there's two of you and you want to stay quiet, two of you can be plumbed in with headphones. You can even split the keyboard into what Roland used to call twin piano mode. So they can be exactly the same pitch, which is really handy when you're teaching lessons. Say you're a teacher and you want to buy this to do lessons on. They can play in exactly the same range as you on the either side of the piano which is a really nice little feature. Anyway, back to these sounds. Next one. Bit of organ. Uh, we'll flick over to this bad boy for the last one, just to prove they're the same. Vibes. Bit of organ. growing their learning. When I used to be in a shop about 10, 15 years ago, these organ sounds were unplayable. That is definitely pretty good. And some strings. back to that lovely rich piano. Okay, you've heard all the sounds on these two. Let's talk about the differences in the hardware, in the furniture aspect of it. It's a big deal when you're buying one of these type of pianos because it's gonna sit in your home. Otherwise, you'd buy one of those stage keyboards and put a cross brace stand, right? Okay, so why the YDP S34? The S slimline, that's what they're going for. You'll see it in some shots and if you looked online, you'll see this and go, it'll either appeal to you or it won't. To me, this is appealing. Also, I love the fact that it can be flat at the top. They call it console. So you can put stuff on there when you're not practicing. Uh, it's got a soft close feature, little red velvet strip. It feels cool. Uh, conversely, over here on the YDP144, it's a bit more traditional. It looks like that classic Clavinova thing that you've seen before. But you might have some furniture that suits this. Other big difference is the colors they come in. Black, white, rosewood. But this one has a, uh, I think they call it Ash, which looks a bit like, if you're into Kanye West and his Yeezy lines, it looks a bit like that. Uh, both have music rests, so you can all do all your music. This one, little fold out one, it's important to talk about the hardware. Now let's get down to one thing that I felt a real tangible difference on, which was the pedals. They both have three pedals, but I definitely say, again, if you're a more experienced player, or you're looking for that immersive acoustic piano experience. These pedals feel much more realistic to me. This is a little bit stumpier and you can feel it in the action, hey, but functionally no different at all. I'm just gonna show you a posh feature of the sound engine, which they have sympathetic string resonance. Something I wax on about in my Nord videos a lot. So three grand piano, now they're including it in these type of pianos. So if I have, uh, the way to demonstrate is to hold down a C and then I'm going to tap a G. Can you hear the little bit of afters on that? How that's ringing out. Check it out when I play an F sharp. I get nothing. And that's because they've built into the programming that sympathetic string resonance, so notes that work with the keys that you're playing will resonate, just like on a real piano. So that's very cool. And just to show you, like if I go to C sharp and I play a, uh, let's do a A flat. And then I go back to the G. Nothing. So as you're playing and moving, that's doing all of that thinking for you to make it sound more realistic. And I definitely, it's been a few years since I sat at these type of pianos and it's a big, improvement. 
I hope you like this video. If you like what we're doing, consider subscribing. If you don't, let us know and look out for the bundle deals. Stuart is a master of the bundle. So if you're thinking, yeah, well, I want to get a store and I want to get some headphones, we've got all those bundle deals in the run up to Christmas. Thanks, Oz, and we'll see you again soon.